Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the channel. So just a quick note before we actually get into the main video, I'm just kind of recording this segment in front of the main video just to apologize for yesterday. Uh, essentially what had happened with the audio on this Lamborghini Urus money method was essentially when I'd done my listening back and uh, typically I go to rebalance the game audio, instead of putting the minus in front I actually just put the original number meaning that it boosted it up. So by the time it came to exporting and being uploaded and such, the audio was completely all, all over the place and way too loud from the gameplay um, so yeah a little mistake on my part but it completely ruined the entire video and then once it was uploaded I kind of you know was out on a Sunday and such and only came back around to it uh, this afternoon and noticed that the audio was completely botched so hopefully I've gone back and kind of refixed the entire audio that everything should be balanced correctly at this point so I do apologize for that one uh, my video that I was going to upload today will be put back to two tomorrow uh, that one's already kind of you know pretty much done so expect that one to be dropping uh, tomorrow instead of the original plan which was today so yeah big apologies for what happened hopefully it should sound good now any issues let me know down below take care guys peace hey what is up guys welcome back to the channel and welcome back to gran turismo 7 we're going to continue on with our money making methods for the update 1.44 cars this time moving to the lamborghini urus now, this car is very much capable of running a 600 and a 700 PP build, and I thought I'd kind of aim to show the 600 build, as this thing, in terms of its stats, is just absolutely bonkers for a 600 PP car. So, let's move on straight away to the price point to go ahead and get this car. So the Lamborghini Urus is one of the cheaper Lamborghinis in the game. It's going to cost you 300,000 credits to be able to acquire this. Its standard PP rating is 549.11. It's four-wheel drive, 641 brake horsepower from standard with a weight of 2,197 kilograms. So the Urus actually weighs a massive amount compared to, I guess, regular cars in the game. However, you can use this to your advantage if you're one of those that wants to go for the war riding technique of Tokyo. And honestly, this car will massively do it quite easily. Now, its only real downside is going to be its fuel efficiency. In terms of the build itself, for the first thing you want to do is fit the wide body for this car. So it's going to cost you around about 50,000 credits to get this installed. In terms of the area parts we have running on this build, it's going to be a front type a on the side it is also going to be a type a at the rear again type a and then for the wing it's going to be a type b so just ensure you've got those parts installed in terms of livery i do want to give a big thank you to gd design one of the most popular livery creators in gran turismo community uh, came up with this design for the lamborghini urus now a lot of the designs i just absolutely hated them for the lamborghini they were either pretty cheap replicas of you know different versions of the urus but this one for me really stood out i absolutely love the look of this thing let's go on to the build next it's going to be sports hard compound of tires with a fully customizable suspension Body height is 145 and 195. Anti roll bar is going to be 10 for both. Compression 40 for both. Expansion next, and that's going to be 50 across the board, with natural frequency being 3.20 at the front and 3.35 at the rear. Negative camber angle is going to be 0 at the front and 2.2 at the rear. Toe angle next is going to be 0 again at the front and 0.05 inwards at the rear. Fully customizable differential, you want all of these set to 5, so just ensure they're at the minimum value. Torque Vector Incentive diff is going to be set to 50-50. In terms of the gearbox, we're running the fully customizable manual. Now, I've got mine set to 340, mainly for fuel uh, efficiency. If you put it too low, whilst you will be naturally hitting higher top speeds, funnily enough, believe it or not, um, you will basically run out of fuel very, very quickly. Fully customizable ECU, downforce at the front is 0 and 150 rear. High RPM turbocharger, anti-lag system set to strong, racing intercooler, racing air cleaner, racing silencer, racing exhaust manifold, racing brake system, racing pads, hydraulic handbrake for that final little turn which can be, you know, needing a bit of a push with a handbrake. Then I also have the likes of the steering angle adapter, four-wheel st uh, steering controller, racing clutch and flywheel, propeller shaft is going to be carbon. Then we have all of the performance upgrades, so bore up, stroke up, engine balance, tuning, 
polished ports, high lift camshaft, titanium connecting rods and pistons and racing crankshaft. We are not going to install the weight reduction or rigidity for this build as it will take it more towards a 700 build. Next up, race difficulty. Now I do recommend setting it on easy with a Lamborghini. We're not going overall for the fastest lap times in the world. Again, it's all about making use of the new cars to the game. In terms of the event itself, it's over in Asia at Tokyo Expressway in Japan. Head over to this event here, which is a WTC 600, which is a 12 lap event with a maximum reward of 550,000 credits. Just go ahead and enter that. So when it comes to making money, I honestly think the performance of the 700 build kind of heads more towards that typical 700 PP barrier. For me with this 600 build, it's definitely not about performance. However, it is about making use of all the vehicles that came with update 1.44. And for me, it's just a different way to run the game. I feel like I don't really head to Tokyo much these days and it is nice to head back with just something completely different and that's what this build is aimed around. Again it is a very heavy very thirsty vehicle no matter what you do so really whilst you can't run it at its full potential at Tokyo it just gives it a different location to run. So again this car is very much easier to run at both 600 and 700 pp events with probably the performance wise potential of the 700 being much more akin to what we typically see for the 700 event. The 600, not really as quick, but definitely something just a little bit different. Again, we're keeping the weight in there as if we take that off, then it ends up straight in the 700 category. So in terms of the actual strategy itself, it is super simple to run this car. Now again, because it's thirsty, we're not really gonna run much of the high fuel mixers. Now, when we do start though, we are gonna be running fuel mix one. So to begin with, just keep it in fuel mix one where you start, try and outrun the AI as quickly as possible. You should be reaching upwards of 200 miles per hour as you get to the end of the straight. And then just to ensure that you're gonna clear them, I fully recommend just riding the outside of the wall of turn one. At this point, you'll basically be in the lead and you'll be able to just start kind of getting on with the rest of the strategy. So once you're up and on the wall, at that point, you're gonna turn the engine down to fuel mix six, and this is where you're naturally gonna run this vehicle for the rest of the race. Now, the conditions to begin with at Tokyo are very much a touch and go situation. They can be very, very treacherous on lap one. However, because we have four wheel drive and a fair amount of weight, funnily enough, this vehicle will handle those pretty awful conditions very easily, even on a tire compound as slow as the sports hard. So again, for that opening lap, just watch a fuel mix six after the main straight, and that is basically it for the rest of the first stint that you're going to be doing. In terms of the clean race bonus, the only ways you're going to lose it here is A, by touching the AI. If you remotely touch them, that is your clean race bonus gone. And that final chicane that I showed you, if you run over the cone and the back line there, again, it will kind of get rid of that clean race bonus. On lap four, the conditions are going to start to improve. This is where it comes into pretty much full dry conditions. At this point, you don't have to worry too much and your, I guess, overall pace will start to improve as the race goes on. So the way I like to think of it is that laps one to three is all about surviving and just dragging the car around. Anything from four onwards is basically the rest of the first part of your stint in dry conditions. Now I'm gonna pit here at the end of lap six after running fuel mix six for the entirety of the stint apart from what I showed you when we first started. Now at this point, I'm not actually gonna go for another set of tires. Lamborghini Urus with its four wheel drive and such is insanely good on its tire consumption. Uh, but again, when it comes to the fuel, it's a little bit of a different story. So it won't completely shred the tires, but it will absolutely drink fuel. Hence why we don't really want to touch much out other than fuel mix six. Now the car's gonna be a bit different for this second run and it does allow you a bit more freedom but not by much to actually run the higher fuel modes so we're going to go for fuel mix one just to exit the pit get ourselves back up to speed and then again we're going to flick it back down to fuel mix six and continue as we were so as you can see once we've got going and we're in the more twisty section we're just going to turn the engine back down and then again it's just all about relying on the rest of the cars to start their pit stops and such like that to build up that gap on lap 11, at this point, you should have a bit of extra fuel left. So what I started to do was again on the straight run fuel mix one and then back down to fuel mix six when it came to the tight and twisty sections. Again, this will allow your lap times to improve and just shave off a few extra seconds that you'd be wasting if you was only running fuel mix six. Now I did end up in the end actually overdoing it on fuel mix one. So I did end up running out of fuel come the end of this race. As you can see, I ended up crawling across the line on that final straight, running out of the final corner. So it really did add a bunch of time onto this run in the end, unfortunately. 
unfortunately, but it was still a very nice and easy first place. So as you can see, we did it in a time of 26 minutes, 32.185, but absolutely butchered that final lap. Fastest lap was a 2 minute 4.396 set on lap 11 in dry conditions with the ability to turn the engine up on the street and go for those 200 mile per hour plus runs. So while certainly not the fastest, it is still a very easy method to get running and it definitely gives us a different location to finally run a 600 pp vehicle. 825k for this payout in that time limit or that time frame should I say. Overall it is I guess more efficient to run the 600 than the 700 um, in terms of credits per time put in so overall very easy very simple and it is nice to finally once again be running a vehicle at tokyo let me know your builds down below and i will see you in the next one a big thank you to all of my channel members listed on screen now take care guys peace